Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. We've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from L.A. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So we know you played for the Ravens. You won a Super Bowl with the Ravens. You are no John Gruden fan that I know of. And I can't wait to see how you come down on what I thought just might have been the craziest Monday night game I have ever witnessed. I've never seen anything flip like just, that game. Just <laughs> lunacy. Here we go. Totally flip. Totally yeah. flip. So it was a roller coaster ride. It really was. Guys, uh, we have to dig in because there's so much here. Let me break it down first. The Raiders won a wild overtime game last night over the Ravens 33-27. to Las Vegas appeared to have the victory early in overtime, but Review called back a potential touchdown. And then Derek Carr threw a pick into the end zone. Fortunately for the silver and black, Lamar Jackson then lost his second fumble of the night. And Carr was able to finally deliver the game-winning touchdown to a wide-open Zay Jones. So, Shannon, what was the biggest reason the Raiders pulled this one off? Because I thought the Ravens relaxed. Skip, they're in complete control of this ball game. They're up 14 nothing. They're just driving the ball. They're controlling the clock. I, I agree. And I'm like, okay, this is gonna yep. the Ravens gonna, you know, the Ravens are back to looking like the Ravens, although they have a lot of injuries on the other side of the football. Uh, it felt like it was about to get yeah, messy. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna skip. I'm like, yep. okay, yeah, I'm sitting yep. back. I'm like, okay, they're doing things, big things, yep. and then next thing you know, boom. Um the Ravens have some issues. Offensively, the right tackle skip is going to be a problem for them moving forward because at the end of the game, it ended up costing them in a situation they should have had picked up. They didn't pick it up like they're supposed to, and they leave a, a D lineman on a running back who gave a half ass effort in the block, and Nassib hits uh, Lamar in the back, and he fumbles the football, but Lamar has to do a better job. Remember, uh, the running back is is just all new. He's out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. A game. lot of injuries overcome. Yeah. I mean, you're down your two starters, and they're just signing guys off the, off yeah. the street and putting them on the practice squad. Skip, but I thought, I thought the turnovers really hurt. Because, Skip, I don't get this with Lamar. Lamar is scrambling. Skip, the guy hits him. He's in the air. He's 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 horizontal. He was. And he tried to switch the ball from his right to his left. Why? Mm -hmm. If anything, just put both hands on the ball. Why would you try to switch the ball from right to left? It makes no sense. And that's the one thing you, you see a lot of fumble skill. When guys get up in the air, we just saw John New Smith. Leave his feet, boom, ball comes out. And that's a lot of time because the ball is away from your body. Yep. So now the ball is going to be easier for it to come out. And I just thought uh, there's too many mistakes. For Lamar is just missing too many throws that should be routine. At this stage of his career, some of the throws that he's missing should be routine, and they're not, and I need to know why. Mm. Um, Mark Andrews let him down, Skip, because on a second down, he hit him for a first down. Now we're in a great situation. Come back the next play, get hit in the back, the ball's a turnover. And Wink Martindale, I know you're aggressive. I know this is the style that you like to coach. It's like their DNA. I mean, it's just, but it's always been the Ravens style. Skip, Go ahead. But what you have is that when you have two all-pro corners and you have another first-round pick in Jimmy Smith, who was who's a, a, a corner? You can play this, but when you're without Marcus Peters, yep. you're without Jimmy Smith. Yep. So imagine now, your two two, uh, two of your top three corners are out. So now you got to bring the fourth, fifth, and sixth corners I got on it. the field, and you play zero coverage. You play this man coverage skip. You can't allow a team to go 37 yards with two plays with no timeouts and kick a field goal. You can't play zone. Mm. Why would you play that coverage? And I get the last play, Skip. That was what we call bomb blitz, zero coverage. I'm blowing it up. I'm bringing everybody and Skip. They got rubbed off. Guys, what are you thinking? Marlon, other guy, what are you th tell me? Tell me what you're thinking. They're in a stack, a, a bunch formation. It's a bunch, yeah. You think everybody's just going to release straight on the field? Yep. Or are they going to crisscross and try to get natural rubs, you and your guy? And that's what happened. And the next thing you know, Marlon's like, you know what? He got me. Zay Jones got me. Touchdown ball game's over. The Ravens made too many mistakes, Skip. There's no way they're supposed to lose this game with the way they're running the football, the way they're controlling the clock. And then all of a sudden they get careless, incomplete here, turnover there, and the game completely flips. And give De Derek, Car De Derek Carr, give him credit, Skip. John Gruden has never embraced him 
like I think a, a head coach should embrace his quarterback. Agreed. But he played phenomenal last night. He okay. played unbelievable. Okay. Here I go. In the end, I will seize upon what you said about Lamar, but I thought he played better. I thought he threw it better than you're giving him credit for. I thought, all told, Lamar played well enough to win the football game except for two plays. You cannot fumble, especially on the road, especially in a new stadium with people inside for the first time, and Raider Nation was yeah. out in force. They were going crazy. And, and it was crazy <laughs> were, loud in there. They were crazy. So you, you cannot give them reason to take throat again. Mm -hmm. You can't grab your own throat and choke up the football twice. Right. You just cannot do it. You have to, to, to your point, I don't know what he's trying to change hands. And, and he made so many good runs in the game, and it's just wrong. You, you cannot fumble the football. No. That time, he let the Raiders out of jail on that one and got him back in the game, the one in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. And then the one in overtime, it's just some, he's just trying so hard to make a play, and you're waiting, and you're waiting, and you're waiting. You just have to protect the football and right. wrap up. That's it. It's, it's one thing Brady's always done at the highest level. You just have to know. He got, he, he got hit the other night where I, I don't know how he held on the football, but it's, it's, it's issue number one for a quarter. It's priority number one. In the pocket, you, you, have, to, security. you, you have to control the football. You cannot let them knock the ball out of your hands because it's such an instant turnaround yeah. turnover. It well, gives, they're already in field goal range now, yeah. Skip. At worst case okay. scenario, they're going to get an opportunity at a, field, a short field goal. Okay, so we get that. Lamar was great and Lamar was bad. Right. In, in the end, the bad cost them. That's the bottom line to that game. You cannot fumble twice. But you and I agree that it's the inconsistency that's the problem for him. It, he can be spectacular, right. and then he can be like, Lamar, what the hell are you thinking? Okay. Okay, while well, we're on that, before I get to my real point here, let, let's just see. Uh, I got a tape of great Lamar last okay. night. I'm, I'm talking about great. Yes. If we could just see some of the, the great throws that he made. This is the scramble. This is the unteachable, uncoachable. Yeah. It is gift. It is MVP yeah. quality to Hollywood Brown for a touchdown. And this throw to Sammy Watkins, I just don't know if you can do it better than that. That's beautiful. Skip, that's what that, you, that's you just, see there. You're like, look yes. At this run. Look at this run. It, it is, it, listen, it's beyond Michael Vick. Trust me, it's it's just, it's so spectacular. And, and then. There are a handful of quarterbacks can do that. That I, I think there's only one. I just think there's only one. This is so breathtaking to me. The ability to throw it and run it at the highest of levels. This, this run right here, this is just spectacular. He is untackleable. And, and this was a, a clutch run, you know, yeah. that got them down to save the game, put them back ahead. Okay? So this is great Lamar, and you can't fumble. Because in, in a nip-tuck game, a teeter totter game, mm -hmm. an emotional roller coaster game. Y y if if you fumble twice and they don't turn it over at all, except for the weird, uh, the, <laughs> the, the, down the, yeah, okay, which didn't kill them. It didn't kill them. It stopped the it, it stopped them from winning, but it right. didn't lose the game. Right. Lamar's two fumbles effectively lost the game. Correct. Okay, now I'm going to jump to the end of the game because this was very fascinating to me. On the play before the Zay Jones touchdown that ends it. John Gruden does something that a lot of great coaches I've been around, going back to Bill Walsh, Jimmy Johnson, they, they all believe that in an overtime situation, if you're in field goal range, just don't kick risk it. running plays. Correct. Just kick it. Right. It, Jimmy lost a game at Houston one year. It was his second year coaching the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. And he, he Emmett fumbled on, on a play where you had them cold. You, you, it was They were playing at I guess it was at Oilers it, at that point. It's the dome then. It's the it's Astrodome. The dome. It's in the Astrodome. <laughs> and, and, and he's just kicking himself after the game because he went ahead and handed it to right. Emmett one more time to kind of position the, right. the football, and right. he fumbled it. Right. And they lost the game because of that, and they were still a young, upcoming football team. Right. But you learn your lesson. Just kick just, the damn thing. Right. That's what they all say. Just right. go. If you're there, just go ahead. And by the way, if you get it blocked on second down and you recover it, it's still your football. That's why I'm a, still, I'm a firm believer okay, in that also. Right. Kick the ball on third, second or third down. Okay, so John Gruden lost control of this football game because his instinct was, okay, I, I've seen enough. I'm going to kick it. Well, if you're going to kick it, you've got to get your team out there because the clock is winding down. Right. And I thought he very nearly blew the game because he got a minus five on a delay of game because he didn't 
His wheels didn't turn quickly enough to say, go, right. field goal team, right. go. Right. And it took like a minute of him going back and forth in his head, should I, should I not, should I, should I not? Right. And by the time they ran out there, plus I, I wouldn't have liked Carlson's chances if, you, if you're just rushing. Yes, his, kick, his health to skeleton okay? now. It, now it's just, it, it, it's madness it, yes, out there. Yes. It's chaos. Yeah. And they get a minus five, and all of a sudden, Groove's like, oh, God, now I've, I put five more yards on the kick. Correct. Maybe I should run a play. Right. Okay, so he nearly blows the game. And then, to his credit, this is vintage. This is what I love about John Gruden. This is why he calls his own plays. This is why he's in the quarterbacks, literally in his ear, telling him every move to make. I think John even tells him during the play when to throw it or not to throw it. <laughs> So-and-so's open. Throw it to so-and-so. And, and what does he do? You described the play. After the game, Derek Carr said, that he coached me all week. If we see this, we got an audible to this. And they hadn't seen it all game, but out of nowhere, Wink comes with the cover zero. zero. There's nobody, there are no safeties back because they are, they're guessing, educated guessing, it's gonna be a run. Right. And all of a sudden, you've got Zay Jones in the game, and he's not a starter, right. so he just happened to be in on this play, mm -hmm. and Marlon Humphrey's gonna take him right. single coverage, and here we go, and and he he was told if you see this audible to that, and so it's the bunch left, and and all of a sudden Zay Jones just takes off, and Marlon Humphrey doesn't even run. It's like a left fielder. Once he gets picked, he you knows know, he's done. Okay, it's like a left fielder in baseball when somebody just hits one four hundred feet over your head, you don't even turn to watch. It's giving well, you know they got they got to run on third base, and yeah. the guy and you already know it's over your head. Ain't no sense of you and running. You just it's start so, it's, walking. It's, it's, it's yeah, like, yeah. like it's just over. Yes. A, again, for me. I would want Marlon just to run just in case something. What if he just starts Bob juggling it. the ball? Yep. You just don't know. But but he knew he got cooked. Right. He got had right. on that play. And so to John Gruden's credit, he had been teaching and coaching mm -hmm. that coverage against that set. If we get this, you have to audible to Zay Correct. because he is going to be able to run past somebody. Right. Yes. And he did. And Skip, if you watch game. this. He's telling him now, we're going to audible to this, but you're going to have to get back. But if you watch Kenyon Drake, he comes from the other side and gets just enough because this enough. is what we call a bomb blitz. They're all we're going to blow it up, Skip, but zero coverage. Yep. So this is what we got here. Yep. He does a great job of retreating. The back comes across the formation. Not the, get, not the easiest throw because he had to back foot he, it. Off his back yeah, foot. Yeah. But he'd skip all he knows. If I just get it there, I got it. Look at this. Okay. Boom. If, he, if the back doesn't get that, the guy, he might get some opportunity to get in uh, uh, Derek Carr's face. It was a great call. It skipped. That's why you study all that tape. That's why Not you Not in do. distance, okay, okay. area of the field. This is okay. what he likes to do. That's where Chucky is at his best. Again, where he's at his worst is... He, he sees the quarterback as an extension of himself. Right. And it's hard on the quarterback. Right. And he won in Oakland with Rich Gannon because Rich Gannon would tell him where to go right. with his calls right. or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he won at Tampa with t another loaded football team. We're going to talk about that later right. in the show. But he had Brad Johnson, a veteran quarterback, who would tell him, no, leave me alone. I got this. Right. 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 Okay. So that was John at his worst and then at his best on mm -hmm. the last play. And Derek Carr, to his credit, he puts up with it. He, he is, listen, Derek, Derek Carr is just a good dude. He, he, he tries hard. He yep. practices hard. He yep. plays hard. He works me, hard. Yep. And he puts up with a lot of you-know-what from right. John Gruden. And he doesn't bellyache or bitch about it publicly. He just keeps playing. Right. And to, to my eye, I thought, even though his QBR wasn't great last night, it was a 53, I thought under the circumstances, under the magnitude, under the pressure that they found themselves under, I thought it was Derek Carr's greatest game of his career. All told, everything that happened in that game, was he not all-time clutch down the stretch? Now, you can discredit the Raiders. Well, Skip, uh, he, Raider had a lot of, he had a lot of drops, too. Waller dropped several. Okay, uh, I'm hidden glad rugs. you brought that up. I'm glad you brought that up. He threw 19 balls to Darren Waller. I want to be Darren Waller. 19 balls? Do you <laughs> not want that? Again, he's sort of a hybrid, wide out, tight end. I don't know yeah. what he is. Yeah. But, but the, they, they just forced the ball to Darren Waller because he's 6'6 or whatever he is, you know, and he, right. just, and he can yeah, fly. Yeah, uh, yes. Okay, we get that. But the point is, he only caught 10 of them for 105 yards. That, that, those are good numbers. Right. But the 19 targets and, and only 10 catches, 
He won't fight for anything. He will give Derek Carr no help at all. And I think we have one play that, that caught my eye at the end of, near the end of the half. And, and he throws it up for Darren Waller. And just catch. Just, just catch it. It's, it, it. All you have to do is swivel right. a little bit. Right. And, 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 and Derek Carr looked to the sideline and said, just put your hands up. Just, just it's put, almost like you tried to one-hand like yeah. it. Yeah, it's like, like, yeah, it's just, like just both hands. Two, yes. Put your two hands on it. Yes, this, yes. This happened repeatedly in the football game where if, unless the pass hit him right on the button, he would not fight for it. He would not adjust to it. But well, that 49's fault. Once he sees that guy disappears and blocks, yeah. he's supposed to sink. He's supposed okay. to be there. That should have been a pick. Okay. 49, okay, the guy goes away. Now you sink, 49, sink, sink, okay. sink. Okay, but, oh, but the ball is highly catchable. Yes. To and it's going to be a 30-yard gain. Yes. And, and Derek Carr's like, just put your hands up, okay? And it happened repeatedly. He gets no help from a guy he targeted 19 yes. times. Yes. Okay, so now let's look at what Derek Carr did down the stretch, if we can. Let's look at the first drive that, that put them back, that they had fallen behind 24-17 to tie the game. And he, he converts a third and 10 at the, the uh, Baltimore 47. Mm -hmm. And the throw to Ruggs, where, where he had to throw it across the field. This, yeah. I was thinking, when right. he ran this, I was thinking this to Tyreek play. Yeah, now you see why John Johnson overran the play. Right. It, it's somewhat similar <laughs> yes. if we could see it. But this is third and ten. This is a huge play in the game. This is a win or lose play. And he just drops it right down he the did. chimney to Ruggs. And it was a sweet throw. And then he throws it to your man, Darren Waller. And then he throws the touchdown pass to Darren Waller. And all of a sudden, we're back to 24 all. Well, right. that's pretty clutch drive yes. at that point in the game because that's that's with four minutes left, that down to three minutes left. Okay? Then Lamar says, I got this. Right. He, he makes that great run up the middle. They get the field goal from the best kicker in pro football, as we talked about many yeah. times. And all of a sudden, there's only 37 seconds left in regulation with no timeouts. Zero. And, and you, you, how can you do this? And all of a sudden, Brian Edwards has been nowhere to be found in the offense. And all of a sudden, he starts going to Brian Edwards out of the blue, the kid from South Carolina. Yeah. Okay? Why are you, Skip, why are you playing man okay. coverage in this situation? All right. Well, it, but are these not good throws? Jim? Yeah, but I'm, but I'm saying, Skip, yeah. it's, it's the, from a defensive perspective, why would you go man coverage? Okay. Let, let's see the throw. He goes 20 and 18 to Brian Edwards. Yeah, look at this. Okay. Why, are you, why are you doing this? Okay, but he's covered. He's pretty well covered. I, I, I don't know. Those are big time clutch that, throws. That last throw, that know, last that, throw that, was big time. That had some this. juice on it. Not that one. Okay, all right. The other one, the, 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 this one. This okay, one. Th this is for this is the big, game. Skip, this is, this is a big time throw. Look at this. this. Is, that's for the game. You're going to lose if you don't make that throw. No timeouts. And he made the throw to set up a 55-yard field goal. I know the kid had that kind of leg. Okay, well, he did. and he. It would have been good from 60. He boomed it. <laughs> he did, because I think his adrenaline was Raider Nation pumping. Yes. Like black hole. He yes. was like out of his mind. Yes. Okay, so now he's on fire, and he carries it over into overtime. They win the toss, and, and let's look at what he did. Oh, he was... In, he, in overtime he was to Brian Edwards. Let's, let's see these plays. This is just Clutch City. He, he's out of his mind. Uh, that'll work. Okay. Oh, that was the, we're, we're seeing these plays. This is the one that we thought had won it. Won the right? game. Okay. So here's the, yeah, here's the throw to Brian Edwards that looked like it had won the game. I thought he got in, actually, until I saw the replay. Replay, yeah. And, and everybody else thought he got in. The Raiders celebrated. The Raiders shook hands with the Ravens. They bro hugged. They did everything. They, <laughs> they're, they're talking about the wives and kids. Yeah. How you doing? Yeah, good luck, bad. Good, good luck game. down, yep. the, down <laughs> through the season. Yep. And all of a sudden, whoops, you got to go back and do it again. And then so Alex Leatherwood. Yeah, it's first and goal at the one-yard line, and now it started because Derek Carr tried to sneak it and just couldn't push the pile. And then Leatherwood, the rookie from Alabama, he moves, and now you're in big trouble because now you, you go all the way back to there and you got an incomplete and here we come, here we go, and he throws it, and I thought Sneed should have caught the ball. Oh, he I know there was a little too much on oh, it. Oh, he put some mustard on it, that's okay. He did put some mustard on okay. it. Okay, but still, I just thought that that Sneed has to snag that ball, and if yeah. he does, the game's over, uh, right. obviously. But he did not. That was just an incomplete, well-covered to Renfro, and play in question right through his hands, off a helmet, 
into a Ravens hands. <laughs> That's what like, I thought. Okay, this is for the Ravens. Okay, and, That's and, what I thought this was for the Ravens, Skip. And it felt like what has become typical Raiders collapse. Yes. It felt like what can go wrong just went wrong for, right. the, for the Raiders because they had first and goal at the one to win the game, and all of a sudden it's the Ravens ball going the other way. Mm-hmm. And you know and I know what happened. The, the strip sack by Nassib happened. Skip, you mentioned there were throws that you see Lamar make, the throw to Sammy Watkins, the throw on the move to a Hollywood Brown, and then there's two there's two stretches where they run a boot and he has the fullback wide open yep. and he throws it at his feet. And then on third down and eight, he has the back on the rail, on the rim, right on the sideline, Skip, and he throws it tw- 10 yards in front of him. Yep. Those, Skip, it's the little things. See, people think it's all, it's, yeah, a lot of times it will come down to a throw. Yep. But in a situation like this, it's those throws that keep you on the field, that keeps you in a rhythm. Those are the throws that the really good quarterbacks, I got it. they make more time than that. I'm not saying well, no quarterback makes every throw. I, I know, but he did win the MVP because yes. he was making all those throws. Yes, yes. But, Skip, at this point in time, a, 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 a eight-yard, uh, you know, a little stick route, it's got to be automatic. A guy standing on the sideline with no pressure in your face has to be automatic. Yeah. Okay, but in the end, I loved watching this football game because both teams competed their behinds. Yes. Because what I love about your old team, the Ravens, is the pride still lasts there. The, the, the pride in that locker room, okay, so they lost Dobbins, and they lost Edwards, and they lost Justice Hill, and then they lost Marcus Peters mm-hmm. on top of it. And a lot of teams would be down in the mouth, heads hanging. Mm-hmm. They came out and fought yep. their tails yep. off. And I appreciate that. The quarterback fights his tail mm-hmm. off to a, to a fault yes. because he, he tries to do a little too, too much, much and he loses mm-hmm. the football. But for once, the Raiders showed me some refused to lose. Right. And it started with the quarterback. And I just don't know if he can play much better than that. Yeah against a defense that can be tricky to play against because they are so well coached Mm -hmm. and they're so versatile and they throw so many different looks at you. And he stood strong all night long. The thing is, Skip, the thing is is that the Ravens have always had that one guy, be it Suggs, be it Matthew Judon, maybe it's a Zadarius Smith, uh, Pernell McPhee when he was in it earlier. They've always had one guy that they could always count on to get home. Yep. Now Wink Martinell has to scheme, has to bring more, but he doesn't have uh, uh, Smith. No. He doesn't have the other Marcus Peters he back doesn't. there. No. So now I don't know if you can still run that same scheme yeah. when you have less players on the back end to cover up because if they don't get home, Skip, you played zero coverage, there's nobody there, and you see Derek Carr retreat, loft the ball up, Rugs coming all the way across the field. Yeah. You see a, a, a yeah. Edwards catching the ball. You And I just don't know, Skip. You might have to change your philosophy. I know this is your principle. This is what you believe in. But you don't have the horses. I mean, hey, if I don't have the horses, I'm not entering the Kentucky Derby because I don't have a horse that can run, win. Yeah. And so that's what Wink, Wink, Wink Martindale's going to have to do. Now, they get, Skip, you know who's coming to town next Sunday night, right? My homeboy. Now, you run that coverage against him, and Tyreek could go for 300. And by the way, Kansas City has beaten Baltimore four straight, and Mahomes has beaten Lamar all three times. Yes. He's 3-0 and against Lamar, yeah. and this is once again in Baltimore. Yes. Mm. You have to figure that one out. Yeah, you be, uh, well, let me tell you what you don't do. Don't run zero coverage against yeah. Tyreek. Now the, now, the Raiders got it, don't, have the, got it, got it, don't have it easy either because they're on the road in Pittsburgh. They are. So yeah. we're going to find, we're gonna find out a lot about what Baltimore is. Now, I know what I believe, what I think they are because I was in that locker room. Mm-hmm. And even though I wasn't in there with none of them, no, Skip, if it, you— if, It stays. That, that pride stays. Skip, in if you, I don't know if you saw it last yeah. night. When they were lock, walking out the locker room, they have a door. They have a mat. Play like a Raven. Mm-hmm. They take that on the road with them because that's the last thing they want you to see as you walk out the locker room. Okay. Understand you're a raven. I love Play that. like that to Ray. Yep, I got that. I like that too. Although I have to say it was probably a long flight home oh, my goodness. for the Ooh, Ravens yeah. last night after that one. But what a way to close it out, guys. We had so much action over the weekend and it just so much to look forward to this season. No mercy.
The Cowboys seem to be in limbo weekly with players going in and out of the lineup. Offensive lineman Lyle Collins will miss five games due to suspension and receiver Michael Gallup was placed on IR. But yesterday, Dallas activated offensive guard Zach Martin from the COVID list while placing pass rusher Randy Gregory on it. Gregory still has a chance to play if he clears two negative tests before playing the Chargers this weekend. So Shannon, how much trouble are the Cowboys in when they play at the Chargers this weekend? Skip, now I thought this was going to be a tough game anyway because the Chargers, they show, they started showing you something last year at the end of the season and that quarterback is better than I, than better and I don't know if anybody, I know a lot of people said that they like this kid, but I don't think anybody thought this. Not 31 touchdowns in his rookie season. He played extremely well, and he picked right up where he left off last year. But I thought this was going to be a tough game, Skip. It's going to be a first game home, and the defense is, is better than you think. Um, Joey Bosa, even if Lyle Collins was there, Joey Bosa is a guy that does a great job of transferring speed to power. Mm -hmm. He can bend the edge. He's a, he can rush with power. So he's tremendous. He's as good as we have in the, in the league mm -hmm. at the end position. Yep. Derwin James is back and healthy. They have players in the secondary that can cause you a problem. Now, uh, uh, for the other side, now Gallup, Skip, I think Gallup is the guy that they probably will miss the least because you still have Amari, you still have C.D. Lamb. I like Cedric Wilson. I think Wilson does a great job coming in. Agreed. I think they have enough on that side of the ball. Gregory is another is another issue, Skip, because he's a guy that can generate pressure. And that's what seemed to where the Cowboys are lacking is getting pressure. Skip, you, do you really want this kid to be able to just stand back there and pat the rock? and just take it with Keenan Allen or Williams or take, whomever you like, Jerry Cook? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. So I think of all the guys that could possibly miss, I think Gregory would be the one that they missed the most for the simple fact, remember, Skip, now Tom Brady, you know, you saw what Tom Brady just did to him. And because they didn't get the pressure. So for me, look, yeah, Lyle Collins, that, that's an issue. They, but they get Zach Martin back. Mm. So it, I, I think the thing for me, is that I think the Cowboys will struggle, probably win this game, but I'm not ready to pick probably them. Probably win this game? But I'm not ready to pick wait, them wait, just wait, yet. Wait, 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 wait a second. After all that doom saying that came out of your mouth, and the, then you slip in at the end, they're probably going to no, no. win this game. They're three-point dogs. No, all I said was Gallup is out. I like Wilson. Now, if Coop was out, you might have, you might, you know, nah, now you might be on to something. No, because CD would just take it no, over. CD gonna, <laughs> I know you think CD would take over. But I just think the thing, Skip, of all the guys that's going to be out, I think the guy that that they're going to miss the most is pro And we don't know. He's still, like, like I said, Skip, because he's vaccinated, five days, a couple of negative tests, and he's going to be able to play. I'm just, just let's, so let's just say for the sake of argument, he plays. Now you're down Gallup. Uh, really? Is that you know you you? I don't I don't really think so, Skip. Mm. But this game, win, lose, or draw, is going to be much more difficult than you think. And then guess what? Fly Eagles fly. Fly Eagles fly. Fly Eagles fly. It's a it's a Monday <laughs> night game back at Jerry World. I like the Eagles. So it'd be two weeks from last night. Yeah. It'd be Jalen Hurts at Jerry World. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. suddenly become a big Eagles fan. Yo, right. fly, Eagles fly. Oh, I like it. I'm yeah. liking this. It's funny. I touted the Eagles all <laughs> offseason. You poo-pooed them all offseason. You said they're just garbage. Jalen uh, hurt, Hurts, you just don't believe in. And all of a sudden, it's fly, Eagles fly. You were on the Washington bandwagon the whole offseason. And all of a sudden, after one game losing to one team, these Chargers, you say enough of those guys. Yeah, the, the, the quarterback got a dislocated hip. They put one the wide receiver. <laughs> they just got put him on our. What do you what do you, what do you what do you want me to do? I I tried to tell you the whole off season that Taylor Heineke is better than Fitzmagic, but yeah. you wouldn't listen to me because I watched Taylor Heineke first late in the the season go up. We came he came in off the bench the, against the Eagles. Well, against the uh, Carolina. Yeah, yeah, remember? Yeah, and. He was, oh, yeah, I guess when he came out, yeah, from and he was, Alex Smith. He was really good. Right. And then against Tampa in that first-round playoff game, he was really good. He was he was sensational. He was lighting them up, yeah. and, and he can run. And obviously, Fitzmagic can't run much at all. No. And unfortunately, he can't run at all right yeah. now because he's got a hit. <laughs> and I don't know how much he's going to be able to run when he comes I, back, I if he comes back. I don't know. So, to me, I'm not riding anybody off the division, but here is my takeaway from all the above. I will admit. When I saw that Michael Gallup 
has gone on to IR, so it's at least three weeks and could yeah. be four, five, six weeks with a calf, whatever, strain, right. pull, whatever. You, and you and I have talked about calves for years on the show. Once you get one of those, it just stops you. Yeah. What did Zach Martin have in the Washington game on Thanksgiving? Pulled his calf early in the game on the first drive. Done and, for the rest of the you're not pushing off. You got to walk. No. You got to walk like okay. you're walking with a cane. Okay, you're done. Okay, we get that. So that was discouraging to right. say the least. Okay. And then all of a sudden I read another story. Randy Gregory's on the COVID list because he's, they just flat out said he's got COVID, but vaccinated, no symptoms, maybe a chance if you can pass two straight tests. So, okay. So I sat back and I said, you know what? This year, I'm not going to fall into this, oh, whoa, am I track. <laughs> I'm not going to go Aaron Rodgers because he's always doomed saying about, oh, <laughs> no, I, don't, I need more help. I need more input. They don't treat me right. They drafted my successor, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to do it to my team. I'm going to look at the glass as not half full, but, but it's like nine-tenths full because I love your point about Cedric Wilson. I can actually make a case they'll be a little better without Gallup. As much as I believe in Gallup as a deep threat and, and a tough guy, he made some big catches the other night mm -hmm. in the first half right. and then was gone for the whole second half. Cedric Wilson is shifty, and he's got a little bit of Edelman Amendola where yeah. he, can, he can line he's up. He's better in suited slot. in the slot. Yeah, and he can sort of duck and dart around mm -hmm. and option route mm -hmm. it in the middle of the field and maybe make a few catches. He'll catch it if you get it within yeah. eye shot of mm -hmm. it. Okay, so I kind of like the fit with him in the slot and let CD do what he should have been doing all last year, which is split out wide. Oh, you can. You like okay. CD outside the numbers. Okay. I do, and, I, and Amari is Amari. So if I got my two studs outside and Cedric inside, I should be okay. Yeah. It might be time for Zeke to rise and shine. And, and again, they just went up against Tampa last year, led the league and shutting down the run. And I just think they went into the game and Kellen Moore said, we just can't do this. Right. And they barely even tried to right. do that. And I still say I was very disappointed in Zeke on that huge third down play on the pitch play because – the, I, I'm just telling you, the more I think about it, you and Eric Dickerson <laughs> both argued with me on this, but I thought if you get him on the edge against a guy who just got activated off the practice squad who's bounced around the league and undrafted free agent safety, you, you just got to either beat him to the pylon or just run right through him. Right. You, you just, you're Ezekiel <laughs> Elliott, and you make the most money of any running back in football. So I need to see that guy. I need to see Zeke in full force, full throttle, in this game where they can balance up and run the football. Now, back to the offensive line. At least Zach Martin is back. Correct. And, and he's not coming off an injury. He's coming off COVID. Right. So, and by the way, speaking of COVID, my, my team now has 10, 10 on the COVID list since the start of training camp. Seriously? Well, what's going on in Texas? Nothing good. Exactly. Right? <laughs> exactly. Okay, so they, they are sort of a microcosm of the state of Texas. Right. They're just going to get hit hard by COVID, yes. and they have been hit right. pretty hard. Because there's no bubble situation, okay. Skip. There's no bubble. I got it. Okay, so now back to Zach Martin. I told you yesterday, I still think there's a chance you move him to the, all the way out to he the right tackle. He doesn't want to play that, Skip. Okay, I, I believe they did it twice last year out of desperation, mm -hmm. and I did love the way Connor McGovern st stood in for him at right guard at Tampa and held up all night long. I thought he was really good. Okay, so if, if you have to, in a pinch, out of desperation, move him out to right tackle just to try to survive the game, I am okay with that. Okay. He won't be okay with it. I will agree. He's <laughs> no, going to be a Hall of Fame right guard, right. but it's you got to take one for the right. team. You're not going to be at your greatest because it's not where you're comfortable. Exactly, because, Skip, I'm an all-pro guard. I'm probably going to have a bust in can at guard, and you put me at tackle where you could possibly make me look Ordinary. You might. I'm not trying to look because Joy Bosa is legit, Skip. I don't know how many people really understand what Joy Bo but Joy Bosa is legit. I, I never doubted <laughs> and that. He, and, and he's like, oh, what about next week? Can I move to right tackle next week against okay. the Eagles as opposed to dealing with Joy Bosa? Okay. How legit is Ty Naseki? That's who we signed as a backup swing tackle. Well, you got what about right. Steele? What about Knight? What about him? Terrence Steele. Yeah, Steele. The Knight. man named Steele. Shouldn't he be good with a last name Steele? Man of Steel. Yeah. He and Knight are undrafted free agents. Yeah. Really? Uh, I don't trust it. I don't like it. Uh, 
you, you have to go in a pinch with Zach Martin. I think it'll take one for the team, and I think it will inspire the a team. A man last name should tell you something about the man, right? Mm -hmm. Steel. Yeah. He'll be tough. Mm -hmm. uh, Unbreakable. I don't think so. <laughs> so I'll take Otto McGovern at right guard. I still love my team, and all I need is for my team to win the least. And this is a huge swing game because, to your point, you would not want to fall down 0 and 2 Correct. and come home to face a suddenly hot Eagles right. team because they well might be 2 and 0 by Correct. then and on fire to come into Dallas, where I thought Jalen Hurts played pretty well last year. Yeah, and Skip, the thing is, you know, Trayvon Diggs played well. He did a great job on Mike Evans now. Mm -hmm. He did a great job, but Keenan Allen is a different type of receiver. Keenan Mel mainly works out of the slot. Yep. He, he, he's a tremendous route runner. Tremendous. Tremendous. He doesn't yep. have great speed, long mm -hmm. speed, but in a confined space, mm. you couldn't touch him in a phone booth. Mm. So if they put digs on him, he's going to have his work cut. He's going to have to do a lot of start, stop, change of direction yep. things. So, it's, look, the thing about SoFi, I understand the Chargers are coming home, but I got a sneaky suspicion. There's going to be more Cowboy fans in there. Got potential. It, it, I would charge it Southern fan. California is cowboy Man, heaven. Yeah, I don't know how that happened. Heaven. I don't know how that happened. When you walk in the door here at Fox in the morning, you see our man Derek, the security guard downstairs, yeah. and he is an all-time cowboy fan. Yep. Born and raised a bunch in of them. L.A. I just took $100 off one of the security guys. $100? Yeah, he bet the cowboy the Tampa, and he got off at 4 o'clock, and I made him wait because he tried to pass the money off to D to hand it to me. I said, nah. You gonna wait till I get here? He was off at four. I got here at five thirty-five. They were nine-point dogs. Did you give him any points? I gave him whatever they scored, and it wasn't more than Tampa. Really? Well, yep. You just took him to the cleaners. Sure did. Go take him uh, again too. Well, tell him that I got his back because <laughs> I went nothing but do from you on this show because I would not have made that bet. <laughs> but now it sounds like you have been won over by what you saw on opening night at Tampa. Because you are afraid of my cowboy, you afraid. would just plunge out there and say, "I got the charge." No, 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 Skip. You'd be gloating over this no, bad. Hey, hold on, Skip. We got until we got tomorrow, Wednesday, mm -hmm. Thursday, Friday. Yeah. Who knows? But you just said you. They'll probably probably win. win. That is a Tuesday. Ooh. That is not a Friday Ooh. when we ultimately make our bets. Ooh. So when we make our bets, you never know. Cowboys have made a believer out of Shannon Sharp. Give me three points. One game. Give me three points. Give you. It's the other way around, my friend. No, y'all got Dak huh? Prescott. It you opened, say, you told me Dak Prescott's top five. He is back, and he is. He played top five the other night. Okay, then well, I'm gonna need five points. I'm yeah. gonna need five points then. Yeah, well, I'm. I'm not gonna let you security guard me. <laughs> Sorry. What if you were taking money from the security I place? sure do, yeah, Jenny. Come on. Jeez. <laughs> I need to talk Those to you after men. the show. Hey. very nice of you. It ain't my fault, Skip. <laughs> It's not your fault. It's not your fault. Well, you know by, what else is your fault? By the way, you fault? came within a last field goal losing your $100. You, you realize that, right? I had Tom Brady. Okay. Well, there you go. Thank you. Mm, you have Tom Brady? Guess. Oh, should go. we talk about yeah. Tom Brady? Yeah, let's yeah, talk, talk about Tom Brady. Brady. It's against the Cowboys. Nah, I don't got Tom Brady. The season opener earned him Offensive Player of the Week honors from Pro Football Focus. The 44-year-old quarterback threw for 379 yards and four touchdowns during a 31-29 win for the Bucks and will look to continue that momentum heading into a matchup with the Falcons this weekend on Fox. Shannon, do you have a problem with this? Uh, yes, I have a big problem with this. <laughs> and, I, I, you know, Tom Brady played well, but I don't think well? it, I don't think anybody that watched Sunday's games thought Tom Brady played better than Kyler Murray, who went on the road. And a lot of people had Tennessee, believe in Tennessee, is a serious, serious Deep playoff, Super Bowl contending team, and he took them apart. Mahomes, what he did at home against Cleveland, Skip Bayless's mm. Super Bowl team, mm -hmm. he took them apart. He was down by 12, down by nine in the fourth. Mm. Jameis Winston, 14 to 20, 148, five touchdowns. He had only had six incompletions. Mm. Matthew Stafford, mm. 20 of 26, 321, three touchdowns. A 156.1, the highest quarterback rating of his career. Mm -hmm. Now, they said Tom Brady. Do you realize Skip Tom Brady only completed 64% of his passes? Mm -hmm. That was 20th in completion percentage for week one. Mm -hmm. They said when Tom Brady had five big-time throws, did you know that Kyler Murray had six big-time throws? So I'm just trying to think, what scenario? 
Kyler Murray had a turnover. Tom Brady had two turnovers. Mm. Tom Brady had five big-time throws. Kyler Murray had six big-time throws. Tom Brady threw, what, four touchdowns. Kyler Murray threw four touchdowns mm. and had another one on the ground and beat the team. Ain't nobody talking about no Cowboys in the Super Bowl but you, potentially. Mm. But everybody say, Tennessee legit. Now that they got Julio, Tannehill, A.J. Brown, uh, Derrick Henry, wow, good team. Cleveland Browns, you. Oh, Baker. Oh, Baker Mayfield. Oh, Baker Mayfield. He the guy. He the guy. You, you said he looked good. He did look good. Yeah. He looked good at my homeboy. Mm. Skip, I just gave you four guys. I ain't even mentioned Teddy Bicycle. Mm. Teddy Bridgewater went to the Giants. And you see he was, how he was stepping? Mm. Yeah, step right on in there with a victory. We got something for y'all, too. But anyway. By the way, that fourth down touchdown pass that he threw <laughs> on the little scramble. What are the Giants? Do? How do you not tackle that guy? I, I'm just wondering. The, Go ahead. The Giants are bad. Yeah. But anyway, Skip, I just gave you five guys. Kyler, Mahomes, Jameis, and Stafford really played better than Tom Brady did. Because mm. the Cowboys defense, we already know. Mm. Me and you know this. Cowboys, def Cowboys defense is terrible. Mm. It is not terrible. It is terrible. I told you it'd be 50% better than last year, and it might be 75% better. And than still finished like, what, 20th? Mm. You know what? We, on this show, we need to put somewhere in the studio a big red light that just starts blinking on and off with a big foghorn attached to it. Why? Because it's Brady hate alert. Boop, boop, boop. We, we need it. Brady hate alert. It's, it's coming again. It's already started, and it's just week one. I keep trying to tell you who and what this man is. At 44, he's going on 24. I've already told you, I've predicted he's going to win the MVP this year. And I believe his team against all odds. You got me on this because I. you want to talk about this is as far out on the limb as I've ever been on this or any show I've ever been on. I'm saying he can lead them to 20 and 0 this year, 20 and 0. They will be favored to win every game they play, and I believe he will close all those deals. It's virtually impossible unless you're Thomas Edward Patrick Brady Jr. And opening night against my team playing inspired, flawless football, he did that. He did absolutely nothing wrong, and he did everything right. And I agree with everything you just said about those, would you have four or five other four. quarterbacks? They were four. all spectacular but they weren't quite as good what? as this guy. He, here's the capsule from your favorite website, Pro Football Focus. Brady put the ball right where it needed to be all night long, bingo, and finished with five big-time throws, as you pointed out, okay. and you did not point this part out, and no turnover-worthy plays because even the Hall of Famer Shannon Sharp said the two interceptions, nothing wrong. They're both disqualified. But they're still on his resume. Yeah, you're they, right. They're on his resume, but... You can't fault him for a, a little flip pass that hits Fournette right in the hands and glances off his hands right to Teron Diggs. You can't fault Brady for that. And then he tries at the end of a ha the half a uh, Hail Mary. There was actually a great throw. He threw it like 65 yards in the air. Gronk's down there. I don't know where Gronk was. Gronk's not very good at leaping for Hail Marys. That is not right. his forte. Right. And all of a sudden the ball gets booted up in the air and mm -hmm. it comes down in the Cowboys' right. arms. And that's not Tom Brady's fault. So no turnover-worthy plays. Pro Football Focus goes on to say he was throwing receivers open. It's genius at work. You just sit back and say, I, I, how does he do that? Goes on to say attacking their leverage and executing the offense with perfect timing. It was perfection personified on full display on opening Thursday night football. It was a tour de force. It was a masterpiece. What do you say? It's Pavarotti at the Sydney Opera House. No, that way. It wasn't that. No, it, it was, was not beyond that. Beyond that. No. It's a game that you wish you could just package and place up on the mantle in the museum. Where, where it, it was one for the ages. He is the one and yeah. only of the ages. And before I let you have the ball back, okay. I just want to demonstrate some of the plays that Tom Brady made on Thursday night against my inspired New look Cowboy defense. He rolled out. He's on the run, throwing across his body to Gronk for a touchdown. Is You, you can't throw it any more sweetly than that to A.B. Right. for a touchdown for 47 yards. Then That was the masterpiece of the night where they read the blitz. They know that all of a sudden D-Law is going to have to cover him, and you know the rest of the story. And then that was the here we go again. 
Here's the rollout throw. It, th this is just, there's a thing of beauty. And then this play to Gronk. Th this is double genius at work. The GOAT tight end from the GOAT quarterback reading it and exploiting it to the fullest. And then this is the play with 24 seconds left, 24 yards back shoulder to Chris Godwin on Jordan Lewis that won the football game. You just, I, I don't know. It, it, you, you have to appreciate it because you're watching the greatest player in NFL history yeah. on full display at age 44 on a solo stage national yeah. kickoff game. You, you can't get any greater than this. And pro football focus, they're no big fan of Brady. They sat yes, back they and said, that's it. Yeah, oh, oh, hold on. Exactly. So I'm trying to figure out how did a guy that got 65 Ooh. QBR, every quarterback on this list got a high QBR in Brady. What did I tell you the next day on Friday's show? I told you I was dumbfounded. Okay. You I was blindsided. I was flummoxed. I was gobsmacked. Yeah, I, I, me I too. I, I don't know how you could even begin to say that's a 65 because nothing went wrong. Yeah. Show me show me the, the flaws. Show me the fly in the ointment, the fly in the soup. I, I don't see any flies. Hey, but here. my thing is, Skip. If you let's take Jameis, do we believe Green Bay? Everybody says Green Bay is a serious Super Bowl contending team. Mm -hmm. He took them apart. Cleveland, okay, serious. Okay, time out on Jameis. I, again, now we have to nitpick. But you realize when he hit the 55-yarder late in the fourth quarter, right. that was the pa at that point he had 98 yards right. passing. Yeah. So it was high skill, high efficiency in the red zone. Right. Touchdowns in the red yeah. zone. Yeah. All short passes. Nothing much between the 20s. Okay. Right? Okay. Okay, so I, I can't, if you make me nitpick, I'm going to nitpick that. Okay, but okay, okay. Since, you, since you're nitpicking and you're doing a great job of that, get your kneeling thread and nitpick this one. Matthew Stafford, nitpick that one. Okay, all right. Well, I'd rather go to the top to my homeboy. Okay, yeah, okay. Nit, nit, please nit, 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 nitpick okay. him. L let me ask you this. Did the Dallas Cowboys turn the football over three times because Cleveland handed the whole game back to Patrick Mahomes? It, it was one thing after another. It was a chub fumble. It was the punter muffing the snap. Mm -hmm. It was Baker at the end of the game getting tackled from behind, trying to throw it out of bounds, falling down, and not getting enough on the football and getting it picked. Yeah. Three second-half blunders that handed the game back to Patrick Mahomes. Did my Dallas Cowboys hand the game to Tom Brady? No, they didn't do anything wrong. They played. Dak played arguably his greatest game ever. Skip. Yeah. But my homeboy, the one you say Baker couldn't get enough throw on, my homeboy rolling out of bounds, falls out of bounds, and throws it 50. And it was pure luck. And, 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 look, it went look. It went off for no grabs. Yes, it was. It's, it's like it, it was a 50-50 ball that John Johnson completely misplayed. He lost the football in the air, and he could not find it. And, and Tyreek, to his credit, stopped and found it. Yeah. Okay, and all of a sudden, once he found it and caught it, John Johnson has run himself completely out of the play, and Tyreek says, oh, I'm gone. Cal oh, Skip, Cal you. Cal Murray, 21 to 32, 289, four touchdowns and a rush touchdown, put up 38 points on a playoff. The, the Tennessee Titans had six big-time throws. Mm -hmm. Patrick Mahone, boy, 27 to 36, 333, three touchdowns, came back from 12 in the second half, nine in the fourth quarter, to beat the very Browns team that one Skip Bayless says – his Tampa Bay Buccaneers will beat in the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Matthew Stafford, 20 of 26, 321, three touchdowns against the Bears. Now, the Bears did not play particularly well that night, but you and I both know when the come at the end of the season, the Bears will have a top flight defense. And Tom Brady, Tom threw it 50 times. Nobody else was, I mentioned, was over 40. Mm -hmm. He had 18 incompletions mm -hmm. with two interceptions, completed 64% of his passes, which was 20th. Mm -hmm. And was playing a horrible defense. And they talk about his a winners. horrible defense? I think not. Skip Bayless. The Cowboys really? Really. Really. Yeah. So they're, are, they're uh, an average defense, which is way better than the Let me ask you a question. Year. Do you believe they have at the end of the year they have a better defense than the Bears? Yes or no? Yes. No. Will yes. they have a better do they have a better defense than the Cleveland Browns? No. Okay. Will they have a better defense than Green Bay? I, I'm starting to wonder about that. Okay. But it's 50-50. Okay. Yep. So with that being said, your guy, 64% completion percentage, your guy, a 65 QBR, Kyler Murray was 88. Uh, not Kyler Murray, excuse me. My homeboy was 88. Mm. Kyler was 80. Mm. Jameis, 93. Stafford, come on, Skip. I'm looking. All of them were really good, but they weren't.
Skip. Tom Brady. Skip. No, no. Is- let me ask you a question. See, you see what you did there? I want you to take, I want you to take Brady off the back of that jersey and put Johnson on the back of that jersey and give him the same stats. Mm-hmm. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. I bet say. you $5 to a buck of the cow manure and I let you put the door in our book. Skip, stop I this, man. Want, I don't want cow manure. That's what I'm going to bet you, a golden doorknob. I, I think your argument has become cow manure. Skip, you watch, the, you, you watch my homeboy. You watch Kyler. You watch Stafford on Sunday night. I saw it, and I saw this, and I just sat back and said, that's just too great. That's what I said. That's beyond comprehension how great that was against a team that everybody except you, well, I think even you the next day, agreed they were way better, the Dallas Cowboys, than you thought they were going to be because you said blowout, and it it went down to the last drop. And you knew and I knew, the world knew that the Dallas Cowboys left too much time on the clock when they were forced to kick their what looked like game-winning field goal. 124 left is way too much time for that guy because he is the GOAT. And he showed you again, he just goaded the Dallas Cowboys. And you thought and you thought when you were up by 12 points and you had the ball, you just knew you was going to win the game. You just knew it. Mm-hmm. Skip, so let me ask you a question. When the season started, were the, were the Dallas Cowboys, as far as power rankings, were they ranked in, head of the, in front of the Tennessee Titans? Were they ranked ahead of the Cleveland Browns? Were they ranked ahead of the Green Bay Packers? It's a simple yes or no question. No, but okay. after the game, were they? Were, would they be now? <laughs> would they be now? Because everybody's eyes were open to, wait a second, Dan Quinn's doing some stuff with that defense. Micah Parsons is going to be a force and a star. Yeah, all Demarcus Lawrence rose and shone. Randy Gregory, God bless his soul, he he is a a force to be reckoned with coming off the other edge. And all of a sudden, you've got your pieces in place. They are so deep at linebacker, they come in waves at you. Yeah. They are 75% better than Yeah, they they might stop the run, but they ain't stopping no pass. What did Tom Brady say after the game? That's a solid defense. Let that figure. Let that skip. Let let, let me ask you a question. When Tom Brady played the Ravens, did he say that's a solid defense or that was a great defense? Mm. You know that you see that's that but see that, that that's that PC talk. I, that's I, a solid team. I didn't the, say we had Ray Lewis no, at line. No, no. I that, did not say we had Ed Reed at safety. They, when he was describing the Dallas Cowboys, they got a lot of draft picks. Mm. What is that? Mm. Who says that when they think somebody's good? They got some draft picks over. Yeah, everybody got draft picks. That's a solid team. That's PC of saying they some bull jive. Mm. That's what he said. Some bull jive without saying they some bull jive. Skip, you and I both look, that's not to diminish Tom Brady. Yes, it Tom, is. No, it's the skip. I just gave you four guys. Teddy, Teddy Bicycle had a 96 QBR. Mm. He had the highest bicycle, uh, the highest QBR of the mm. weekend. Mm. What about Russ? Mm. Russ went on the road. Indy, people thought Indy was gonna be a playoff team. Mm. He took them apart. Mm. I first guessed it. I called it. He's going to win MVP at age 44, and you are a guy who tried to send him home five years ago. At, like everybody else, I need people at the home. Rest of the world. Do y'all think Ted, Do y'all think Tom Brady had the best quarterback? Was the best quarterback this weekend? Oh, now you need help from the. Yeah, Brady I need that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. We gotta have to. We yeah. have to. We gonna have Let's to. Re- mobilize the Brady haters because <laughs> they're only about 17 billion. No, no we need. To, we need to get the survey. We need to get the survey meter uh, out again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we used to have a survey meter. Yeah. I, I lose every one of them. Yeah, you should. Yeah. You, your argument. Yeah, because the people who know, they don't vote. They just know. They just know. Oh, now they, yeah. now they don't vote, huh? Yeah. <laughs> now you're going to talk about they got, they got Bayless haters out there yeah. now. Oh, oh, yeah. That's way beyond Brady. Still, hate. you and I both. I'm not saying Tom didn't play well, but I just do not believe he played better than these guys mm-hmm. that I mentioned. Mm-hmm. And you do not either. And you know it. I had two. I told you this after the game. I told you Friday. I called it up front. I'm not betting against that man, but because I knew You bet against my homeboy in September. Mm-hmm. He only know what it's like to lose in September. <laughs> Do you win championships in September? He's gonna be there. He's gonna oh. be, guess where he's gonna be? He's gonna be right there in January and February, too. Mm. What happened when Mahomes faced Brady in the AFC championship game at home? Skip. He was a, like you said, he was a was, baby. He was a baby. The month was January. <laughs> he was a baby. Yeah. And then what happened the next year? Mm. When, he, when he went to he went to New England and yeah. put a foot in you. Yeah. And then y'all were unfortunately wasn't able to get back because yeah, we're looking for y'all. What happened when they met in the Super Bowl? I can't remember. Oh, 
Oh, really? Yeah. After you saw his offensive line? Yeah. It's always something. Oh, <laughs> you see, yeah. that, see, when 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 uh, New Orleans went down there and put foot in y'all, you blamed everybody. He threw that pick six open today. You blamed the receiver. Got the guy benched. Mm -hmm. I don't know whatever happened. You do know what happened to him because you, <laughs> you, yeah. you spoke out against him. Why is he even throwing the ball? Oh, he is from Yale. It? He went to you know, He went to some Ivy League. Pin. The pin. Yeah. Why is he even throwing it to him? He targeted him twice last year, and both of them got pick six. Yeah, see, you blamed the guy. Tom was late on both throws, but you blamed the guy. They're like 12 deep at receiver. Is he even on the, the you depth to, chart? You no. ought to be ashamed. You feel no. good that you got the guy bent? What was his name? I can't even remember. Justin Watson? Or yeah, whatever it was, you got him bent. Not a good sign if we don't But ain't no way Tom Brady played better than my four guys. Not huh? a good sign. Okay. Way to go, Tom. All I right. got your back. No mercy. Sunday, Aaron Rodgers and the Packers suffered a 35-point loss, the worst loss he's had as a starter. And after the game... Aaron did take responsibility, admitting he played bad, but also added, quote, it's just one game. We've got 16 to go. Shannon, uh, do you like the way that Aaron handled the loss? Yeah, he is right. He is played bad, but he don't, don't undersell it, ref. <laughs> Aaron, you don't, don't undersell that. You play like stir fry. Mm -hmm. and you know the stir fry that I'm talking about. Yep. So he owned that. He needs to own it. And I think he's trying to do that. But I don't want to minimize the role that the Saints played in him playing bad. Skip, look, in one game, that's 6% of the season. They got 94% of the season left. Now, <laughs> you heard what his coach said. Matt LaFleur said, we should be, we're, they're embarrassed, and we should be embarrassed. Aaron said, I let him say that. I, I, I ain't say that. We got 16 games to go. So now we're already, we already, we already in conflict, seems like, Skip. Agreed. Look, Aaron said, you remember a couple of years ago, Skip, he said, relax. He spelled it out, and everything was okay. I'm not going to overreact one way or another. Win, lose, or draw. I don't like to overreact in game one because there's so much of the season left. But, and this is a great opportunity for them to, to come back this week and, and to show that they're better. But for me, Skip, I think people are making a lot more of this. See, all the, all the off-season conflict, see, it showed its ugly head. Had they won the game... Everybody's going to say, see, that didn't even, that had no impact on it. Mm -hmm. I told y'all, Aaron, it was like they lose, that had an impact. They win, it would have had no impact. Give the Saints some credit. I think the biggest thing is that Green Bay underestimated them being displaced. No uh, uh, Drew Brees, Jameis Winston, and they underestimated them. And before you know it, they were standing on their head with both feet. So in a situation like that, own it. He owned it. They know they need to play better, but the days of just skip, you can't just show up now in the NFL. There are times when the team was just so much better. The 49ers back in the 80s, they can show up and they won't win. Your Cowboys back in the 90s, they show up, they were going to win. Skip, the teams are too good now. The teams are too good. The league has changed. The way they throw, the guys can throw the football, you're really never out of it. Kind of like basketball with the three-point shot, never being out of the ball game. But Aaron played bad, and he should own that he played bad. You make the most money. You get the most credit. You the MVP. Guess who should get the most blame? Mm -hmm. How you gonna get all the credit and then want to talk about want to dispense the, the blame? Uh-uh. No. Mm -hmm. No. But their defense did play terrible, Skip, now that I'm thinking about it. Okay. Once again, Aaron Rodgers is not going to get a pass on this side of the table. On full display right here, right now, is why Aaron Rodgers does not belong in the same galaxy with oh, Tom Brady. Cool. And here we're, I, I, I'm going to harp <laughs> on Brady again, but he is showing you on full display in Tampa Bay, he's the greatest leader in the history of sports. He has transformed the Suckaneers franchise into winners who in his first year obviously broke through and won the Super Bowl. And I believe they should be favored to win this year's Super Bowl, and I believe they will. It starts and finishes with that guy playing that leadership position in ways Aaron does not play it. Aaron is obviously an all-time great thrower of the football. You say he's a transcendent th he thrower is. of the football. You say he is the greatest thrower of the football in the history of this league. Mm -hmm. And there are many Sundays, I can't argue with that. Right. It's off platform. It's it's wrong foot. <laughs> it, it, the, the footwork is horrendously bad. You but, don't teach that. But the arm talent is it's so undeniable. special. And the feel, the knack, the eye for it is so special that he can get away with it and actually thrive on horrendous footwork. And 
I cannot take away last year because he took the league over during the regular season and ran away with the MVP. Yes. But after that game on Sunday, it was simply the worst performance of his career. Yeah. And it's a long career now because he's 37 years of age. Mm -hmm. It required him to clean the slate by taking full blame after the game. He, he mentioned, yeah, I played bad, or he acknowledged that he sort of agreed with a question, yeah, I played bad. But he didn't own it bad. Yeah. He, he didn't go to, I'm embarrassed. He, he didn't say, that's on me. Right. Right. Even LeBron tweeted, I think it was Twitter, I don't know, we post on IG last night about, he loved what Lamar did because you could read his lips after the second fumble, that's on me. Yes. Because he took it hard after the game and he said, it's just on me, right. I did that. Right, you gotta protect It's yeah. my fault. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not saying the whole game was on Aaron, but those two interceptions were just eyesores. They're sort of hard to watch and they're shocking. But, but he wasn't playing up, he wasn't playing well before those before interceptions that, or if after. We, if we could just see <laughs> what they were just so we can sort of compute them again, sort of just, I, I have no idea what that was, nor does Aaron at that point. That just looked like he didn't care. This, this looked no, like this wasn't the one that don't care. This is like, what the hell? What the hell? I'll just throw it up, and I maybe my guy will catch it, or maybe they'll catch it, because there are two of them <laughs> and one of mine, and I'll just throw it about 70 yards. Right. And maybe, who knows what will happen. He didn't seem invested in this game. He seemed checked out from the start. So now I'm back to the interview Aaron Andrews did for our, our Fox um, pregame pre -game show. And, and it was tremendous. And I loved every second of it for us mm -hmm. and for the audience. I did not love it for the Green Bay Packers because he won't let anything go from the offseason. Yeah, you knew that. Okay, he's still angsting. He's still soul-searching. He's still pouting in a way about, they, they wanted to replace me. You know, I, my... Yeah my name's going to be up in that ring of honor one day, right. I'm paraphrasing how he said it, right. and, and they treated me like that? Yeah, yeah, they happened. don't want input yeah. from me? Yeah, guess what? A lot of those guys that's names up there, yeah. they had to move on elsewhere. A lot of people named us up there in, this, in those stadiums had to move on elsewhere. You, you, there ain't no lifetime guarantee. So it, it would do his team so much good if, if he would just embrace the loss and say, I have to be so much better than I was yeah. today and recommit this week to getting ready for the Detroit Lions. Okay, what did we see from the Lions? They were getting blown out at yeah. home, <laughs> and, and at least the new coach has instilled a little bit of pride in right. that outfit to where they would not quit, mm -hmm. right? And they almost got back in the game, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. They, they roared all the way back and recovered an onside, so at least they showed you a right. little fight. Right. Okay. They also lost Jeff Okuda, who was the third pick in the draft two years ago, a stud corner, and he tore his Achilles. Did you see how we looked? I mean, he was getting chewed out on the sideline for giving up that, what, 80-plus okay, yard or two uh, Debo. I got it. But you know what? He's a really talented kid, and they lost him. So it was, to me, that's still a big loss psychologically to the team. So now they got to go to Lambeau for, is it next Monday? Yeah, next Monday night. <sighs> And, and it, they're going to be up against it. Yeah. And I don't know if Aaron's just sitting, you know, resting on his laurels and looking around the division like, Minnesota, seriously? They just lost to the Bengals. Chicago. Bagels. Chicago, they looked hapless and hopeless yeah. at Rams. The fans, right? the fans don't even want the quarterback that's quarterback, and they don't even want him in there. They want the, <laughs> they, they want the rookie to no, play. They want the rookie to play. Okay? So maybe Aaron's saying, you know, just R-E-L-A-X, because he's looking at the division that is – is just begging to be won, right, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I get all that, but there's something missing here to the point that I hark back to that Bleacher Report piece, that bombshell scathing article about Aaron, where after they hired Lafleur, they did not ask for his input, and you know the top man called right. him and said, "Had Mark Malone, I mean Mark uh, Murphy, Murphy called him and said, Aaron, don't you be the problem." Right. Because that's basically what that executive branch of the Packers thinks of Aaron. He's he's always the problem. But Skip, I had never seen somebody mad at everybody mm -hmm. in the front office. I mean, you you can be upset at one of your bosses, but all of them. You don't like the head coach. You don't like the GM. You don't like the CEO. The guy that's running it. Damn, you upset at everybody. But it. it causes such negativity yeah. within that once you get up against a Brady in a home NFC Championship game. 
your character gets tested and, and it just explodes right. right before your very eyes in the fourth quarter. They just unravel, right? But, but Skip, for me, boss, I'm not walking around on no eggshell for no player. I'm the boss. I don't give a damn if you're unhappy. You're going to play. You're here this year. And then we'll talk next year. It'll be next year. Okay. But here's the thing I also I want to mention. I, I would be very remiss if I didn't mention this. Cowboy fans, you leading the you the drum major of the Cowboy Parade are being very, very giddy that you played the defending champs, played them close. Green Bay fans are shocked that they lost to the Saints minus Drew Brees. And guess what both of your records are? Mm. Okay. Over. You got a cold? Over. Huh. Yeah, both of you, right? You get, oh, you say, oh, Dak. Dak played the best game of his career. CD, Amari, you see that offense. You're 0 1. Who played better? You lost. Or Green Bay. Why would we do that at? Uh -huh. Who, oh, he, we played better at a loss. I told you it's under review at the league office <laughs> as we speak that they're thinking about awarding the Cowboys a tie for that moral victory. Yeah. A tie. You we said, effectively tied them. You said it yourself. You were a columnist, and you wrote <laughs> thousands of books, yeah. thousands, yeah. and you never declared anything more. You, you know, as a matter of fact, you, you built your reputation on not being more okay. or being an okay. We call it an immoral victory. I don't, I don't know what you want it to be. <laughs> call but, it a loss. But we played the heck out of it. Skip, them. put it through. This I, is pro I, sports. I'm still... I'm still, like, vibrating from it because I, I'm on fire with how good this team can be, and all I need it to be is the best team in the least. You do realize that the Cowboys are not five years old. Okay. It is how you – it's not how you play. It's when. How did we go from Aaron Rodgers to the Dallas Because Cowboys? you try – what you try to do – Skip, I've said it. Aaron needs to own this. Now, he – Maybe he didn't own it in the terms mm -hmm. or the gravi the gravitas that you wanted he him to do. Not. It. So you wanted him to get down to the end of this. Oh, damn, oh, damn, I played well, so you, bad. You pointed it out. It was just classic. The young head coach said, w we got embarrassed. Right. And, and Aaron's like, no, no. no I, I, I'll, I'll let him go that, that far. You, you can have that. Yeah. I, I wasn't embarrassed. I'm going to go home and have nine, <laughs> what are they, slivers or whatever they are? Fingers of tequila. Fingers of tequila. Okay, <laughs> yeah. have fun. Right. You know? No, but Skip, the thing is, look, we, we lost bad, and you know, Mike said that you guys should be embarrassed. Okay, that's what he said. Okay, we are. I mean, you do realize we lost by 30. So what's not to be embarrassed about? We're professionals. We're professionals, they're professionals, and they beat the brakes off us. Mm -hmm. It's not like Alabama playing Mercer. It's not like, you know, your school, Oklahoma, playing Western Carolina. The talent disparity is not that. So anytime a team beats you by, you know, three, four, five touchdowns, hell yeah, you're embarrassed. Mm. Or you should be. If you're not, you're in the wrong, you're in the wrong. If you're not embarrassed, I need to know why. Mm. So, so what is so good? I don't want to hear no talking on the bus. I don't want to hear no talking on the plane. You get beat like that, ain't nothing. You should hear a pin drop. I don't want to hear nothing. And there, Skip, when we lose a game, when we lost a game, Skip, I mean, it was like the morgue. Mm. I don't know how it was on other teams, so I can't speak. I can talk about it, the Ravens mm. and the Broncos because that's where I played my 14 years. Mm. Skip, it was, it, it, was, it was a different type of feeling when you lost the ball game. Mm -hmm. Well, I, one night, one fateful night, I rode back on a Cowboy charter after they had lost. This is early in Jimmy's reign there. They had lost a playoff game at Detroit, 38-6, to I believe it was. And he walked back through the back of the plane. I happened to be in the near side of the coach section. And he walked back and saw poor Frank Cornish, an offensive lineman. He came with me, Cornish, him from the UCLA center. That is correct. He was the center. And he happened to be chuckling at that moment. And Jimmy just went off on him because he wanted to send the message, this will not be tolerated <laughs> on this plane going back. No, that, that Mike Shanahan was the exact same. Yeah. What, what's funny? Okay. I want to, Skip, you know, we might be huddled up like, guys, you know, you know, this is what happened. We need to do better than this. You know, John was like, okay, you know, hey, one game, you know, hey, but we got to rebound. But all that key, key, key in, ain't okay, nothing funny. Mm -hmm. We lost by 14, 21 points. What the hell are you laughing at? Mm. Well, I wonder if Aaron was key, key, keying on the flight going back to Green Bay. Or did I he don't fly know if he private? would have been. There, there you go. <laughs> there you go. You know good where that man didn't fly, fly, fly back by himself. I don't know. Man, stop. He's got it all. He <laughs> runs that You can't do that, right? You can't go alone. No. no. <laughs> no. Maybe, he knows had, it. maybe he had company. Right? No. Okay. You can't do that these days, yeah. right? I don't know. I don't know how it works. <laughs> Shannon, you know better than I do. I don't think no so. No mercy. There will be 
no rematch between Jake Paul and Tyron Woodley. Paul kept it honest when he told reporters, quote, I'm living Tyron in the past. He didn't live up to the bet. He didn't get the tattoo. So the rematch just doesn't make sense anymore. Potential next opponents for Paul now range from Tyson Fury's half-brother Tommy Fury to 46-year-old UFC legend Anderson Silva. So, Shannon, what should Jake Paul do next? He should stay away from Anderson Silva. That's what he should do. He should stay away from Jorge, or Jorge Masvidal. Mm. Stay away from them. Skip, he has a nice, he's carved out a nice little niche. Carved out a nice little place for himself. Just stay there. You're fighting guys with very limited boxing skills. You seem to be in a dominant position. Stay there. Nice little novelty act. You're making three, four, five, seven million dollars at a clip. Mm. Leave that alone. Stay there. Mm. Just stay right there. Skip, you, uh, you remember the movie Hitch? And uh, 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 a Will Smith character, he's telling, he's like, this is your space right here. Yep. Do not get outside of that. Mm. What did he do? He get out there, he get a few drinks in him, and he's dancing. Stay right where you are, Jake Paul, and you'll have, make your nice little run of some money. Mm. Reminds me of a situation, Skip, I don't know if you remember this guy. There was a guy boxer named Butterbean. He used to be a tough guy. I do. Butterbean was just waylaying on people. Mm. Boo, boo, just knocking people out. Ooh, Butterbean, step it up. Ooh. Started fighting boxers. Yep. Got beat, then all of a sudden, it wasn't any cool to see Butterbean anymore. Where is he now? <laughs> He's a, if I'm not mistaken, I think last I heard he was a sheriff's deputy in like Jasper, Alabama or something. Mm. Uh, even Larry Holmes beat him at damn near 60 years of age. But Skip, just stay there. Why are you trying to fight these guys? Bruh, this is the hurt. Boxing is the hurt business. Mm -hmm. You got to be serious with this. Mm -hmm. I don't know how serious... You're serious enough to take it where you can beat those guys that have very little skills. Mm -hmm. But you're talking about a guy like Masvidal who can stand and fight. Mm -hmm. You're talking about fighting Silva. Did he, did he not just see what Silva did to Ortiz? Yep. And you're talking about taking that, man? Skip, he got a nice little thing going. Mm. Stay there. Okay. <sighs> Bottom line, I believe in Jake Paul more than you believe in Jake Paul. I'm not saying he will ever become Jerry Quarry. Do you remember Jerry Quarry? <laughs> I do Corey? know Jerry Quarry. Who, who was a tough guy yes. who, who actually stood in with Ali yeah. longer than I thought he would yeah. last. I'm not saying he's that guy. But what I do love about this kid is he's got guts and he's got smarts because he's a great self-promoter. Yeah. I don't think he's going to do anything stupid. Right. Fighting one of those guys would be stupid. Okay. He's also a boxing baby. He is a novice. He is just getting his feet wet. And he's still a little wet behind the ears. Yeah. But he showed me a little something against Tyron Woodley because I'm not going to underestimate the achievement it took to beat Woodley, who is a, even at 39, he's a warrior, man. And he's been in hand-to-hand -hand combat at the highest levels, obviously, of UFC. I'm not saying he's the greatest striker ever. Right. And I, I, I am definitely not saying he was any anywhere near a skilled boxer right? because he had his openings and he could not take his right. openings. But the kid stood in, took some shots, lived to tell, and won the fight. And I thought he won it fair and square. There's one judge that went completely off the reservation. Yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah, know what yeah. that was about. But the point was, in the end, he will make the right choice. And I loved how he put... Ty Woodley on notice because he just flat out put it right out in the middle of the table. If you had done what you said you were going to do and get that tattoo, right. I love Jake Paul. It's right. a hard tattoo to get. Yeah, I, hey, I'd have got it, got me another million dollars, and then got it covered up. Okay. He didn't say I got to keep it forever. He did not. But it's just a pri It's a matter of swallowing all of your pride and getting that tattoo and displaying it publicly. Skip, there was a man in Vegas. He bet, his homeboy bet him $100,000 yep. that he wouldn't get boobs. He went and got him. Okay. For a hundred grand. So for another million, for one point five two million dollars, you wouldn't get a tattoo. Okay. I believe it, the payday would have been bigger. Yeah, than the absolutely. Yes, I, I would agree with that. Okay. So now, what is next? Well, there is this kid, Tommy Fury, who is the half brother of the most skilled heavyweight boxer <laughs> of all time. <laughs> he right. Might be, he might be. So, so again, is Tommy skilled? Well, he took on the kid, Jake Paul's sparring partner right. in the undercard, and beat him up. Yeah. Okay. 
And, well, I don't know what that means, but would you buy that fight? Would you? Yeah. Well, this is a, a real live boxer. He's also a novice boxer. Right. But would you buy it? Yeah, yeah, I would buy that fight because at least you'd say he's a real live boxer right. who's being taught at the highest level by the most skilled heavyweight right. ever, right? But skill, you, and you talk about Mos, but Masvidal skill. Okay, Masvidal is a street nothing. fighter. He, okay, that, he is, he's a bare knuckle yeah. street fighter. I, I agree. Would I buy that fight? You better believe I'm sure I would. would. You'd be on the edge I of your sure seat would. because you would want Jake Paul to get put in his place. Hey, Masvidal go well, do that too. Okay, what did he say about that? He said, "I would love that fight." Okay, are you saying he's biting off way more than way he can more? Shoot? Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't think he is. Okay. Because he's bigger than you think he is. I think he's a little more physical than you think he is, and he's starting to figure out. Remember, he said that's that was my first time in the bright lights. I've never been on, you know, where they had that that it's LeBron's old yeah, home. Yeah, yeah. They, they had Quick it. Loans. It, it looked like it was sixteen thousand. Yeah, looked pretty full yes. to me, right? Yes. So he he said I had to learn how to pace myself and control my emotions under the brightest of lights. Right. And, and again, the paper. I don't know what they made off of it. Yeah. I think it was pretty. Serious. Yeah, you say made like they, well, he gave a million dollar of his purse. To people underneath, so they can okay. be make more than they've ever made yeah. in their life. Right. The skill Masvidal is, is is a different type of animal. Yeah. Now he is. You, you want to talk about a warrior? He's, he's <laughs> yeah. like a backyard. Yeah. Back yeah alley exactly. Warrior. Yes. Okay. I I got it. I, I'm there. I'm buying it. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm not going to write this kid off because his, his whole career, if you look at him, great self promoter, but he takes high risks, and he lives to tell. He backs it up. Skip. He did a great thing. He's fighting. Ben Askew, and he's fighting Nate okay. Robinson. He's this fighting Tyrone. Started. Okay, yeah. right. Stay, Skip, you, you're okay. there. I, I got it. Okay, maybe Tommy Fury would be the next step. And maybe if he could beat Tommy Fury, then maybe he'd start thinking about Jorge Masvidal. Yeah, but to leave Anderson Silva alone, Anderson okay. Silva was a legit boxer. He could, he could like, did he not see what he did? To he, he's a bad man. Yeah. Like, like I just don't know if I, I would. Yeah, leave that alone. I'm, yeah. try, Scott, I'm gonna try to get have this run as long as I possibly can yep. before they figure out. Man, the man, man don't know what he's doing. But yep. by, by the time they figure it out, I don't make me 45, 50 mil. And when you do figure it out, okay, no, no harm, no foul. I think he's on that path right now. Yeah, I'm gonna stay right. I'm gonna stay right here. I'm gonna keep fighting these guys. I call out somebody in Hollywood. Mm. Hey, I fight Sly Stallone. He was Rocky. <laughs> hey, you want to fight? But I'm not, Skip, I'm not stepping into, because now you start stepping up in class with guys that actually know what the hell they're doing. You mess around and get hurt if you're not careful. I'm not going to write this kid off. Well, as long as he stay away from Masvidal and, and, and uh, uh, Silva, mm. he's going to be fine. I don't think he'll stay away from Masvidal. Okay. I think he'll try it. Okay. Shannon Sharp will buy it. Yep. Along with about half the rest of the country. <laughs> Even though it won't be, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make plans. Because <laughs> I already know I'm, it won't be long. I'll be able really? to make my dinner reservation. Really? Yeah, I'm going to have me some dinner reservation probably by 9.30, 10. It's going to be a round <laughs> one KO. Yeah, yeah, I'll be able But the fight is on tonight. Don't worry about it. Get ready. Mm, mm. And I'll still be sitting there watching <laughs> while you're going to and then You ain't going to be watching. <laughs> no mercy. Justin Fields got on the field for five snaps in the Bears' season-opening loss to the Rams, one of which resulted in running for a three-yard touchdown. Still, Fields is still entrenched as the backup QB behind Andy Dalton as Chicago prepares to play Cincinnati this Sunday on Fox. So, Shannon, huh, here's the question. Should Fields start right now? No, and I think Mac Nagy is doing a great job of protecting Fields from the Chicago, from the Bears fans, Skip. Mm. This is what happened in the preseason. He only averaged 5.6 yards per attempt in the preseason, which finished dead last in the NFL in the regular season had, that, had he done that. He held on to the ball too long, took a lot of sacks, and he took a shot. You take very many of those, you're going to be on our. Lost his helmet and almost his head. Yeah, yeah, yep. his head almost was in that helmet. Yep. Skip, I think the worst thing the, Cow the Cowboys, the, uh, the Bears can do is send a player that I understand all the physical gifts his ability to run the football, and he has made some plays. But I don't believe he's ready. And, and Matt Nagy doesn't believe he's ready. He saw the transition when they had Alex Smith and Patrick Mahomes, and then Patrick Mahomes had to wait an entire year. Now, I'm not saying that Justin Fields is Patrick Mahomes, and I know damn well Andy Dalton wasn't uh, Alex Smith when Alex Smith was in his prime. But I don't think Matt Nagy believes that Justin Fields, Skip, is ready to take on the offense and to do all the things that is necessary. Plus, they have times. Do we really believe that Justin Fields make the Bears a contending, a, a, a playoff contending team? 
I don't necessarily believe that, but I believe the time will come, whether he's ready or not, because Andy Dalton will be ineffective, that they're going to have no choice. But right now, they need to wait a little bit more, a little, give him a little bit more time. Mm. I said it before, and it looks like I've been proven right at least for one week, Skip. Mm -hmm. I said, Matt Jones looked to me at coming out of college as the most ready to play. Sunday, that back, he backed me up. He lost, but he backed it up. I think Justin Fields still needs a little bit more time. He's going to have to learn how to push the ball down the field mm -hmm. and get rid of the ball. And Skip, do not make the mistake. If your line says, with Liz, 54 is the mic, mm -hmm. don't you look left. You better look right, because that guy's coming unblocked. I think it's a little bit longer, Skip. A little, let, let the thing marinate a little bit longer. Quick point of order. I still say Cam would have won that game on Sunday. <laughs> he just would have won that game and only I, that I, game. I, I okay. believe you're right, Skip. I believe you're right. Matt Nagy, here's what he has protected to me. Not protecting Justin Fields. I believe Matt Nagy is protecting Matt Nagy. No, he gone after this year, okay. Skip. Do you really believe yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. This is just me, and I believe it with all my heart and soul. I would be starting Justin Fields this coming Sunday against Cincinnati at home. No, this is, and it don't get his revenge. Okay, okay. well, you, you can make that case. But here's <laughs> my point. I believe Matt Nagy knows he's on borrowed time. He knows he's on the thinnest of ice in what's about to be an icy Chicago. Right. And he's hoping that if you, if you keep Justin Fields away from the fans for a while, that they'll say, well, Matt deserves a shot when, when finally Justin gets to play, and maybe that's next year. Mm -mm. Okay. Here's what I am seeing. I respect Andy Dalton. You know how happy I was to have him as my backup quarterback. But Correct. now he is the starting quarterback ahead of Justin Fields. And what I see from Andy Dalton at this stage and age of his career is he won't do anything stupid and he won't do anything great. Right. That's the problem with him right. is that, that he won't get you beat, but he won't beat be the opposition. Let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Do you believe if Justin Fields started uh, Sunday night, they beat the Rams? They just, they'd hang in better. And actually, it was 20 to 14 at one point, thanks to a touchdown by, guess who, Justin Fields. If we could see what he did, I know this is just one, he played five snaps. Right. This is one running play. I just love the body language on this one play because he was not afraid. He just said, see pay dirt, hit pay dirt. Right. And he hit it hard. He hit his little crease there as hard as he could hit it. I love this kid's body language because yes. it says I belong. And you know him from the Atlanta area. Mm -hmm. He's just been a star from the start. He was right there with Trevor Lawrence. Yes. And can he throw it like Trevor? No, he cannot throw it the way Trevor Lawrence throws it. But he can move. Yes. And, and he's got guts as far as playmaking guts. He's just got that gene in him where he makes big plays. And we saw the good and the, the, the great and the bad at Ohio State. Obviously. Well, Matt Nagy is, Skip. More times than not, most coaches believe that a veteran gives them a better chance to win right now than the rookie. I, so, I think the rookie gives you a better chance. I think that team would play more inspired and less deadheaded with Justin instead of Andy Dalton. Well, Skip, I, I just think that, look, the defense made some mistakes. You can't, you can't let Cooper Cup be 20 no, yards behind. Obviously, <laughs> obviously. So, so they're not a very good football team to start with, but sometimes a kid will walk in and a child shall lead you. You right. know, and all of a sudden everybody says, hey, I love the kid's chutzpah. I, right. I, I love his guts that, that he displays because he'll try anything at any time. And he made some big plays. I know he nearly got himself killed, right. but he also made some big plays. They had some splash plays. He had some big running plays. Right. Well, that's what he would do. And Andy Dalton will do none of the above. I just don't, I, I just don't want him to say, I, I understand how the fans are clamoring for him clamoring for him because he did show some flashes during the preseason. But I, I the just last think he's strong enough, tough enough mentally, it, won't, it wouldn't ruin him if he struggled. Well, you better be right, Skip, because you missed with Trubisky. You took a quarterback, yeah. what, three years later, and now you got Justin yeah. Fields. You don't want to ruin him. I didn't believe in Trubisky, but I, I didn't believe in this kid. Yeah, I don't, I, don't believe, I don't believe in trading up one spot <laughs> for, for a quarterback that you could have said right there where you were yeah. and got him. Definitely could. You probably could have <laughs> traded down and got him. No mercy. The Raiders won a wild OT game last night for the Ravens, 33-27. And after a Vegas pick in the end zone and a Lamar Jackson lost fumble, 
Derek Carr was able to finally d- deliver the game-winning touchdown to a wide-open Zay Jones. And after the game, how about this quote from John Gruden? I felt like I died and woke up and died again. And uh, I was like a cat. I had multiple lives tonight. Very Gruden-esque. Shannon, will Gruden's Raiders make the playoffs? No, they're more likely than not to probably finish uh third or fourth in the West. I think I think, I think think the Broncos really have. And I'm not just saying that, Skip, because I play with the Broncos, but I think they have a really, really good team. Defensively, they're really good with Chubb and Vaughn Miller and Shelby Harris and Sertan in that back end with Justin Simmons and Kareem Jackson. They have a – and Fuller. They have a very, very good team. If Teddy Bridgewater can take care of the, uh, the football, Kansas City goes without saying. Kansas City is Kansas City. The Chargers, I believe, are going to be better than what people think they're going to be. I hope not. And probably going to show you on Sunday. Yeah, well, that's not what you said <laughs> earlier. In the I ain't, I ain't, don't worry no. about what I say. Mm-hmm. I'm saying this now. Yep. But anyway, Skip, look. The Browns, the Bills, the Chiefs, the next three games. I'll just like this. The Raiders' next three games at Pittsburgh, home against the Dolphins, at the Chargers. They better hope they 500 at the end of these four games. Mm. I, I, they, I, they better hope. Because they're not, they're not, they're not gonna beat the Chiefs this year, and they're not, and the Broncos gonna get them. Mm. So they're not making the playoffs. <sighs> You're not much of a Gruden fan, and I say that, you know, I'm, I'm like underestimate. <laughs> like you're just not a Gruden fan. I am. Okay. I covered him his first go round when he was with the Raiders, and they got tuck ruled, and that was a really good team. That I don't know, it well might have gone on to win that Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. John Gruden creates incredible force field around a football team. But he needs a GM who will hand him very good talent that he can make great. Right. Because he can inspire at the highest level. Right. But you got to give him some real talent. Yeah. Oh, like the talent he got handed in Tampa? Uh, yeah, like oh. that. <laughs> or like the talent Bruce Allen and Al Davis were handing him yes. in that 01 year when they got tuck ruled because Rich Gannon would go on the next year to be Oh, we MVP. beat him down in 2002. Did you? Okay. You remember the Ravens? Yeah. What's that? We beat them in 2000. Oh, that's right. Raven. Yeah, did. Okay, I got it. But that, that team in 01 had Tim Brown and Jerry Rice mm-hmm. and Charles Woodson and uh, Lincoln Kennedy, who was a pro bowler, and Eric Allen, my mm-hmm. friend from ESPN. Yep. You know, they, yeah. Okay, so, so he's had two really good teams because our friend Derek Brooks obviously captained the next team with John Lynch, and we can just go Sap. and sap and, <laughs> and uh, Simeon, Simeon Rice, Rice and, yeah. and Lord have mercy. You know, it's Rodney just Barber. Yeah, they're just loaded, and it's one of the all-time great defenses. Mm-hmm. Derek thinks it's the all-time greatest Man. defense. But, but John, if you give him that, his, his spark, his energy, his Chucky personality will take it up to the next level. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I'm not sure what Mike Mayock is doing for him because I saw an anonymous quote from an agent in this, uh, the athletic uh, survey that they did a couple of weeks back. And the quote was, we're talking about worst offseason moves, and he said of, of the Raiders, I don't understand the moves they made. It's like they're trying to do what they're not supposed to do in drafts and trades, right. which I often think. And it comes across, said the agent, as fantasy football. Well, Mike Mayock was a very good sort of draft analyst on NFL Network. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll give him that. But all of a sudden, when you're playing with real bullets, so yeah. to speak, you, you, you're struggling and you're reaching and you're flailing. And sometimes I don't know what they're doing. Yeah, so the, the, talk, the, uh, the number four pick in the draft in 2019, Cleveland Farrell, was he, a healthy he was scratch. Inactive last night, I don't know. Yeah. Skip, that's the fourth pick in the draft. That's a big swing. And a yes! Big... Okay, so in the end, they're going to go as far as Derek Carr can take them. And, and it's hard to take John Gruden when you're a quarterback because who did he win with? He won with the rich Gannon who was old enough and wise enough mm-hmm. just to say, John, stop it. Right. Like, I got this. Right. Then go to Brad Johnson with the Tony Dungy team that he inherited. Yep. And Brad Johnson had been there and done all that right. and said, no, right. John, put a sock in it. He I got needs, he needs, In other words, what you're saying, he needs a very veteran ball club. All those ball clubs were very, very Brett veteran. You look at Tampa, Brooksy and, and Sapp and Simeon Rice and Lynch and Rondé Barber had been there. Keyshawn Johnson and Keenan McCardell yeah. and Brad Johnson, they had been there. Yep. So, and you look at the Raiders team, they were very, very veteran. Right. John is, and I, <laughs> I say this is in the highest compliment form, he, he is a great front runner, but he needs some front to run with. Right, you right. You have to give him some Yeah, you front. need to give him a lead horse. You need to give yeah. him a horse that can get out. And, and, and they have to be proven hits in the draft right. where you're like, oh, good, right. boom, we got right. this. So it looked like they were rushing the passer a little better last right. night. And 
Derek Carr played, I thought, the greatest game right. of his career under the circumstances, opening allegiant to fans and Monday yep. night football. Building the waiver. Yep. Now we understand why Pittsburgh, because if he's playing like that at right tackle, he had no business at left tackle. No. That might be why some of the – because that was my concern with the Steelers going in. Like, okay, you see how bad they were offensive line last year? Yep. How are they getting better with – now sometimes you get better by subtraction. Okay, I got it. So, to me, you can throw into one hat – your Denver Broncos and the Chargers, my Cowboys are about to face, and the Raiders. I think you could throw them in a hat, and one of those three will make the playoffs. We're making it. I think the Raiders will. I just liked what I saw. Put some do on it. Some do on it? Do on it. I want five cases. I don't care enough about it. I care enough about it. Five cases? Five cases. So who you like better, Derek Carr or Teddy Bridgewater? I like Teddy Bicycle. Yeah, do you? Yeah, oh, Teddy Bicycle got one. He threw the luckiest fourth down <laughs> touchdown pass I think I've ever seen. Nobody tried to tackle. And guess what? Mm. We're gonna beat y'all too. Mm. No whispering oh, that's around right. here. Yeah, we gonna yeah. beat y'all too. Now that you, you have some <laughs> do on. I'll, I'll take. Do you remember what happened last time? Remember we we we're here. We beat y'all. Remember when Akeem Talib took the interception back 100 plus yards, Thanks. and you got all upset at Dan? Talking about Dan. That was only the second game of the year. Though. <laughs> Right? Baby, hey, no whispering, Shannon. I can't hear you over here. Say it out loud. No mercy. LeBron has been on a mission all offseason with early morning workouts. His latest viral video was him in the gym getting hyped to some music he had playing in the background. So, Shannon, how impressive is this? Very impressive. That's 745 on a Saturday morning. <laughs> Ain't nobody up that time but me and Bron. I'm up walking my dog around the block. Really? Huh. For you. Is that all you got? Yeah, we get that work in. We work, so Skip. Could you please explain to me? Because I cannot fathom LeBron's obsession with constantly having to show everybody. Oh, yeah, out. we in that thing. We in the house. Isn't that what he's supposed to do? No. Isn't that what Kevin Durant does? Are you, are you suggesting you work out harder than Kevin Durant or Kawhi Leonard? Because I promise you, they work out. Really? Hard. What about what about Tom Brady? Mm. When he posted running on the beach with bands? Yeah. Well, he up in you? Well, he in Montana? Mm. Why is he posting? Oh, is he suggesting he works out harder than Patrick Mahomes? He's forty four. Ain't got nothing to do with. I can about eight Super Bowls and he's about to win eight. He should be in a rocking chair then. Yeah. Talk about you always throwing his age in there yeah. so you can have a, ca- a caveat. Love LeBron. Oh, Seven forty five like in the morning. Skip Shannon. We're back same time tomorrow. The hurt hey, is on now. Have a good one.